everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel so today as you can see by the title of this video we are doing k-pop concert tips plus how i plan out the entire trip that i have to make when i go to k-pop concerts only because i do live relatively far from the cities that texas usually has for concerts like concerts are usually in dallas or houston i live very far from those two cities so usually when i go see a concert i have to make a whole trip and manage a whole budget and stuff because of these things but yeah that's what we're gonna do today and let's get on with the video so i did ask you guys on instagram what type of questions you guys had regarding k-pop concert like tips and things like that or what you wanted to know or what questions that you guys had and a lot of y'all had really good questions because i would have never have thought to think about these questions um so as we go on with the video we'll be answering some of them um and then at the end we'll be answering some of the ones that don't pertain to the checklist that i made right um and then just go from there so in my brain in my head i structure things very like like very like step by step so basically i have like a five step plan that i usually follow and i'm like okay this is what i'm gonna do this is how i do it and this is how i follow it essentially um i'm a little bit crazy when it comes to planning like i'm a big like planner like i have to plan everything like i'm always very like the mom friend of the group where it's like okay like i'm taking charge i'm doing this i'm planning everything y'all tell me yes no maybe so and then we just kind of go on from there um but basically i have like a five step plan that i or like five steps that i follow essentially when it comes to k-pop concerts and i'm gonna share them with you guys but before that even starts um money so k-pop concerts as we all know are very very freaking expensive which is literally insane also these companies are not giving us time to save up money like basically these companies are announcing these tours and then they're announcing the tour like a month before the first concert even starts and then tickets go on sale like two and a half weeks before the first show and like they don't give us enough time which is literally insane to me so what i've been doing recently is i actually have it behind me i've been doing a k-pop concert cash jar so basically every single time i get paid or every time um i just come across like extra dollar bills or cash i put them in this little jar um literally right now i've saved up a good chunk of money and i'm very proud of myself because i've never expected myself to like save up this much money but because these concert tickets are getting more expensive like which is literally insane every time i get paid i put 50 dollars in here or more depending on how much i get paid and then we just kind of go in from there and then hope for the best but that's one thing the first step is honestly to save money because you never know when these people are going on tour they like to announce things crazily all of a sudden and sometimes it's it's hard i know it's hard to like get tickets when you don't have money because they didn't give us enough time but besides that little rant of them not giving us enough time we're gonna start off with my first step so the first step is getting the k-pop ticket like getting the concert ticket like you know so basically there's a few questions that i asked myself it's basically it's like what show am i going to what section do i want and how many tickets am i getting so again like i said i live in texas so i try to go to the texas shows if possible i think i've only gone to texas shows but for example i did go see harry styles in la um and in um at the forum so that was like the only concert that i've ever been to that's out of the state of texas and that one was a lot of planning guys that was crazy but even so even these concerts that i go to in houston or dallas it's still a lot of planning for me because i do live far away um but basically i choose what show i'm going to go to whether it's going to be out of state or in state usually it's in state and then after that i'm like okay what sections do i want so usually a few days later they'll show up or they'll announce or the Ticketmaster or axs will post the seating chart of what it is and then i basically decide okay where am i gonna sit and i know recently a lot of these k-pop concerts have been ga if you don't know what ga is basically ga is just like the floor of the concert um there's no seats it's all standing and basically a lot of people tend to camp out um for these shows so they can get barricade i've never camped out for a show and i was still lucky enough to get barricade but honestly it's personal preference you do you if you want to camp out more power to you personally i'm just an old lady and i need to sleep in a bed you know <laughs> but i have to see what it's going to be whether the floor is seated or ga if the floor is ga it depends on the group if i'm like okay yeah no i really want to be close to them and i'll do ga 
but if it's something where I'm like no like I would rather have a seat for like I know people tend to go towards seats more then I'll be like okay no I don't want to be on the floor if it's GA if the floor is seated then I tend to do the floor first like I'm like okay my number one priority is I'm gonna get seats on the floor um, and then after that I'm like okay I'll get a seat in the bowl and I'll say what sections I want the most and then I'll go like to the next one where it's like okay I'll do these sections in the bowl and then my last resort are like nosebleeds but honestly it depends on the venue, but I feel like any seat is a good seat if you're having fun. Like honestly, for Blackpink, I was nosebleeds, but I had the most amazing time ever and I was super chillin'. But once I figure out what section I'm gonna sit at, how many tickets am I getting? Because I tend to go to concerts in groups of people. So usually, I think the most I've ever gotten for a concert was for like Blackpink, which was like five. And we just kind of go from there. Um, but usually because I'm getting more than one ticket leads me to my next points of have more than one person helping you get tickets like I know sometimes like a lot of people are on their own but I've noticed that when I have more than one person helping to get tickets it's a little bit easier only because like you have more chances of getting into the queue or the line quicker and I know a lot of people have asked like in my um, questions on Instagram how do I get into the queue faster honestly guys I have no tips for that honestly I just cross my fingers and hope I get lucky whenever I'm like waiting like literally I just hope I get lucky like there's sometimes where I'm not lucky and there's sometimes where I do get very very lucky like for 17 this past year I got very very lucky that both of my devices um were less than 2000 plus like they were like in the hundreds um but other than that I really don't have any tips for that like literally I wish I did like I wish I had this super secret tip that helps you bypass Ticketmaster and AXS but unfortunately I do not and I'm so sorry I'm just like everybody else I hope for the best fingers crossed and then I kind of go from there um but going back to having multiple people help you only because I have two Ticketmaster accounts and I have two AXS accounts both have two different emails two different phone numbers only because I know Ticketmaster will kick you out of the queue if you have two tabs open under the same account and I get so scared of that so I just made two um, accounts and honestly it's worked pretty well for me um, but also it goes back to having more people helping you because they have their own Ticketmasters so every Ticketmaster is different right and so that's why I have two and two but yeah honestly the more the merrier and it kind of goes like that unless there's a pre-sale so I know a lot of like the hive groups um they do pre-sale and i know a few other groups like twice does pre-sale but twice's pre-sale is strictly through ticketmaster where it's like you don't have to buy anything like you don't have to buy a membership or anything you just sign up on ticketmaster and you cross your fingers and hope for the best but for hype for example i know 17 did it and hypen did it bts did it and um i feel like i'm missing someone txt did it where it's like you have to go onto weverse you buy a membership and then after you buy a membership you sign up for the membership pre-sale because you have to put in all your membership information so that's something completely different and honestly with hive it's like a completely different ball game they do their own thing which is crazy i know blackpink also had weverse pre-sale um but for 17 blackpink and i think BTS, I did buy their um, their membership so I could get a code for a pre-sale, um, but that was it. Those are the only three groups that I've ever done it like that. I know for 127 and for Dream, um, they didn't have a pre-sale. It was all just like they threw everybody out there and hoped for the best. Personally, if I really, really like the group and I really, really want to see them, I'll pay for the membership for a pre-sale to hopefully get a pre-sale code. But if not, like twice, for example, they're just doing regular Ticketmaster pre-sale. You sign up on Ticketmaster and it's like you hope for the best. Either or, pre-sale could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. It uh, just really, really depends. And then lastly, this last point of like ticketing tips of what I usually do is this is why two accounts come in handy, right? So I know for 17, basically, my first um, device got in, right? And then I chose two tickets that were there, and then I put them in my cart, and I went to check out. And on Ticketmaster, you have eight minutes to decide if you're going to pay for these tickets or not. So I was waiting 
looking at these tickets being like, am I gonna buy them, right? But then I noticed that my other device was getting into the queue or like was getting into finally I was gonna be able to pick my tickets and I got into my second device and I noticed that a lot of tickets were popping up only because a lot of the times people will click these tickets but like sometimes when they see the price because a lot of the times these K-pop companies do not give you the prices for these tickets which I think is insane also. So people will like once they see the price like they let go of these tickets and they're kind of just like, oh like I can't afford these, especially if the tickets are seated. So I noticed like a lot of seats were like popping up randomly, right? So on my second device, I noticed a lot of seats were popping up. So then I saw two closer seats, so I ended up getting those two. So a good thing is to like wait just a little bit for seats to pop back up sometimes because sometimes like again, people let go of these seats and then they can be yours. But once that is over and I have the tickets, I bought the tickets, right? Um, usually once I have the tickets in my Ticketmaster account or my friend's Ticketmaster account, whoever got the tickets for, right? But the next step for me is transportation and where am I staying? So basically I have to decide whether I'm gonna fly, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna take a bus or like whatever, and then where am I staying? If I'm flying, I book my tickets right away. Like I'll get my ticket, I'll go straight to the airplane website and I'll book my tickets and I usually fly out the night before only because it's less stress for me instead of flying the day of because you never know if your flight's going to be delayed the day of and then you're going to be like OMG like I'm going to be late to this concert because my flight got delayed. So I try to leave the day before like around the night time and then also it works good because when I go to Dallas I usually stay with friends. Um, so I usually give my friends enough time to go to work, you know, go home, relax, and then they have to come pick me up at the airport, usually. But, if I go to Houston, I have to decide whether I'm gonna stay with a friend, or I'm gonna get a hotel, or I'm gonna get an Airbnb. For 127, we did get a hotel, and usually I try to get hotels very, very close to the venue, only because I usually only go to these cities for the concert like I know a lot of people like will make it a little trip and sometimes I try to make it a little trip but I try to get a hotel or an Airbnb very very close to the venue only because traffic to get to these concerts is insane because usually um, the concert is at peak traffic hour so you're literally just like OMG like I'm stuck in traffic and I hate that because I get nervous um, so I try to stay as close as possible so I can drive really quickly to the venue right right but once that is settled like once i book my plane ticket and i know where i'm staying or if i know that i'm driving and i booked my hotel and i'm like okay everything's good to go purchase the ticket purchase the flight or i'm driving purchased the hotel or if i'm staying with a friend next step is the outfits so i get a lot of questions regarding how i decide on what outfits like i'm gonna wear and honestly it really just depends on like the show and like what type of seat that i have like if it's a seated seat i'll like tr i'll wear something that's a little bit more like fitted to my body like a crop top or like a tight skirt or in like my platform shoes and things like that but if i know that i'm going to be standing in ga i try to wear something a little bit more comfortable like you know like cute but like comfy because i know i'm going to be standing a lot a lot of people ask like what type of vibe I go for and honestly it just depends on what ticket I have like for 127 for example um, in Blackpink for example I wore my platform heels only because I had a seat and usually like during like when they show like the videos when like the artist is changing um, I can sit down I can breathe I can relax and I can be like okay whew, like I can chill but for ATs, for example, that one was GA. I ended up wearing just like boots that were like not platform or anything, just like flat boots. And they're very, very comfy. So, and I wore like an outfit that was still cute, um, but like I was comfortable in it. And so because I was standing the entire time, I didn't want something that was going to make me overheat. And I, but also I didn't want something that was going to make me uncomfortable in. So I kind of like, you know, went for a little bit more of comfort for that one, but still cute, you know? Um, and once I decide if I'm going to do like comfy or like stylish, I guess you could say I choose a theme of my outfit. Like I try. I really try to choose like a theme of my outfit, but honestly, sometimes it just doesn't work. Like for, I think... Again, Blackpink and NCT, I just wore all black. Like literally, no pink for Blackpink, no neo champagne green for NCT. Literally was wearing all black. Like my previous, and I think 17, I was all black also. Like I was just like, honestly, I'm gonna wear something that I think I look good in and then just kind of go from there. The only, I think, 
outfit that was not black i still wore like accents of black was 80s um i wore an outfit inspired by the real music video when they're wearing like their school like outfits like it's like the gray blazer with like the gray slacks and they have like a tie and like um like the white button down i didn't wear a white button down i wore a turtleneck only because it was cold when i went to go see them but i still wore like you know like a school girl outfit i guess not really but like It'll be somewhere on the screen to show you guys, but like that was my 80s outfit based off of the real. Um, but usually I just I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna wear or this is what I'm feeling and I kind of just go for it. But honestly, depending on what you want to wear, that's completely up to you. Do not let anybody tell you like what to wear to these concerts. Like you can wear whatever the heck you want. Sometimes my friends and I will decide on a theme and we'll all dress up like that. Like for example, for Coachella, I'm still trying to figure out my three outfits that I need to wear. Um, but one of the days me and my friends have a theme of what we're doing. So that helps a little bit, but it's completely up to you. You wear what you want to wear. If you want to wear sweatpants and a t-shirt, you wear a sweatpants and a t-shirt. But if you want to wear something that's a little bit crazy, a little bit out of your comfort zone, you can do that as well. You can do literally whatever you want. You can dress however you want. I know a lot of the times K-pop concerts are now like they say fashion shows. And you know, like, I, I get it. We all want to look cute. I get it. But honestly, you wear what you want to wear. Don't let anybody tell you what to wear. It is completely up to you and what you feel comfortable in. Like, again, I kind of just go with whatever vibes I'm feeling. And then I just kind of build an outfit around it and hope for the best you know but yeah i usually order my outfits or i go shopping for my outfits at least like right away only because if i order them it gives me enough time for the outfits to come in but if i go shopping for them then i can wait a little bit later but honestly it just really depends but once i kind of have an idea and i've ordered a few things i start ordering which is step four the accessories or just like things that i need so usually Whenever I go to these concerts, I pack maybe like three days in advance only because like I feel like I'll pack stuff and then I'll remember more things as like the days progress leading up until I'm leaving. And so basically a lot of the accessories that like I have to like look out for are of course the light stick if I have one already. If I don't, I usually buy one at the concert if I want one. Um, and then my bag and purses. I did get a lot of questions on what type of bags that I bring um two shows so honestly they always have the bag policy on the venue's website usually so for i know for houston and dallas i'm going to show you guys what two bags that i usually take and these are the bags that i've taken to every single concert so far and like they've been let in they're really small they're like five by seven they're nothing too crazy um and honestly they they fit everything that i take in them so i do have a what's in my k-pop bag video i have a few of them on my channel one of them is like a little bit more detail and then another one is basically if i'm running late and i'm just throwing stuff in my bag but let me show you the types of bags that i use so these are the two bags that i've taken to concerts um this one i got off of amazon i just typed in little black bag and this came out and then this is a coach bag i got this for christmas and i used it for 127 and they let me in so i'm gonna use this one more often but this one's smaller than this one for sure i feel like um, but you know, these are just small little black bags that I use literally you'll be surprised on how much stuff Fits in this small bag like literally a lot of stuff fits in here the same thing with this one This one does fit a lot more but because it is leather It's a little bit hard to expand but a lot of stuff does fit in there as well But usually these are the size of bags that I take I know some venues they make you take clear bags I do have a clear bag that's literally this size like it's clear it's small don't know where it's at right now but like it's about this size but it's clear got that off of Amazon as well but after I decide what type of purse that I'm taking I also have to put in everything else like whether it's gonna be like oh like my batteries my portable chargers my cables and things like that like in that video of what's in my k-pop bag I go into more into depth of what I try to take in my bags now that I've gotten a little bit of a smaller bag I actually think the clear one is in that video but now that i take a little bit smaller bags because they're not clear it's a little bit harder to put everything in but i try to stuff everything in there but usually my next step is i just kind of like slowly buy things that i know i'm going to need for this concert like accessories and things like that or like portable chargers or like light sticks batteries but again after i get my outfit and i get my hotel and i get my ticket i usually just slowly buy small things that i need um but yeah those two bags are usually the size of bags that are um asked for in the venue again on the website of the venue they usually have their bag policy a lot of the bag policies that i've seen have been like 
like the smallest you can take is like a five by seven bag but those bags have been let into the venues it, and then i think my black one was also let in for harry styles at the form so that that size is pretty good I, I would say so myself so next is the day of the concert you know as like the days progress if you want a closer seat honestly there's no harm in going back into like Ticketmaster or um axs because sometimes they'll release tickets like closer to the date i know they did that for 127 that they released more tickets close to the date and that's how i ended up getting my um floor seat for 127 so when i first got tickets i was sitting in the bowl because there was no more floor tickets because they were like premium but then all of a sudden the premium prices for the tickets dropped to like the same as like regular price tickets and i was literally on a plane to disney world when that happened and like i was like i had a feeling in my gut where i was like i'm gonna check tickets again so i went to go check tickets and i saw the tickets prices dropped so much and they had a seat very very close to the stage so i was like bought it and then put the other one up for sale so you know you can do that also if you want a closer seat you know you don't necessarily have to keep your ticket if you find a better seat for a good price by all means take it um, but day of the concert, right? So basically day of the concert, honestly, day of the concerts for me guys are so stressful and they shouldn't be stressful because like I should be wanting to have fun, you know, but so the day of the concert, honestly, for me, it depends if it's going to be GA or if it's seated. I know I keep on saying GA or seated, but again, if it's GA, a lot of people like to camp out. I've never camped out, um, for GA. I've just been very, very lucky that I've been super close to the stage, um, that I, when I've been GA, but I've never camped out. So for 17 the first time, I got there at 9 a.m. and then I ended up being second row from the stage. For Ace, I got there, I would say around like 4-ish p.m. and I was still about second from the stage. But that one was honestly an accident only because I was looking for my friends because my friends had VIP and I didn't. And I was looking for them because they were like, oh, we're gonna be around this area towards the back. But like, I couldn't find them. And then, all of a sudden I was in the front and like there was nobody in the area too like it was completely empty in the area that I was and then when I looked up I was literally a person me and then in front of that person was the stage and I was like whoa and then for ATs um, I had 18 e VIP so basically if you were 18 e VIP you were more than likely going to get barricade people were still running and pushing which I think is insane um, but literally I in my head I was like okay when I get into the to the floor I'm gonna go to this side and I'm gonna hope for the best but a lot of people were going to the right I went to the left and then when I went to the left I saw there was a big opening on barricade and I ended up getting it but I know a lot of people that were just sector VIP that were behind us they still had a really good view like they were still really really good like I think there were maybe like row two to like three or four behind us and then after that it was like regular ga but from where they were standing like they were still pretty close like we were all pretty close to the stage like regardless of where we were but yeah i've never camped out um for 80s i got there at noon and i was at the back of the 18 -E vip line and then for 17 i got there at 9 a.m the first time not the second time the second time was seated um so that was like in 2020 the one i saw them the first time and then for ace in 20 2019 i got there around 4 p.m and i was still pretty pretty okay but if my seat is ga i tend to get there a little bit more earlier but if my seat is seated you will not see me in that venue until at least an hour before that show starts right so basically if it's seated i will take my time getting ready like wherever i'm at and i'm like okay like i'm gonna look cute and then if it's GA, I wake up really, really early. I do my makeup as cute, but as minimal as possible because you're going to be out and you're going to be sweating all day, which is insane, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on what type of ticket I have. And like my day basically goes from there. Like literally I'm like, okay, I have GA. This is what's going to happen. If I have a seat, this is what's going to happen. And I kind of go from there. But when I get there, again, like in general, the next thing I do after I get into the venue is merch. So usually for seated, I just go through the line, right? And then I go straight to the merch line. I get my merch and I'm like, yeah, like, woo. I go to the restroom after that. Like I go to the restroom and then I go find my seat and I sit down and I wait. 
Um, if it's GA, I know a lot of GA is handled differently depending on your ticket, like if you have VIP GA or just like regular floor GA. So I know for 17, the one I went to in 2020, basically it was like you got in line, you went into the line and you got your ticket or whatever. And then as you cross security, they gave you a wristband with a number and you had to line up by that number. I think I was like number 50 something. And then after that, after you got that wristband, you can roam around, you could do whatever you want. You could chill and like you were good to go um and then when it was time for sound check they were like okay look at the number on your wristband and then line up in that order um for ats um this past november basically they had like the 18e vip line and the 18e sector line or like the sector vip line um they gave us no wristbands but this since it was three of us it was me my friend Deborah and my friend Lindsay, we would basically take turns of like holding our places in line. Like one person would hold it and then the other person would go get merch or just get merch for everybody and then we'd pay back that person. And then the same thing is like someone would hold our place in line and then they would go to the restroom and then we would just like alternate. And honestly, people are really, really nice. Um, when it comes to like talking to other like stands in line, honestly, me personally, I'm very antisocial and I look, I have a really bad resting like B face. Like it's so bad, like it's so bad. And I feel so sorry because it's like, I promise I'm not mean, but I just have a really bad resting like B face. Like my whole family does. And it's like, I try to make conversations with people, but I just get so awkward. Like, it's insane. Like, but if someone talks to me, oh, you just broke my shell and I will continue talking to you. Like, literally, I will not shut up and you'll probably get sick of me. Um, but usually I just tend to talk to my friends that I went to the concert with. And yeah, that's basically how GA works. GA, just know that you're going to be standing there for the longest time or like be waiting around for like the longest time. Seated. Again, I will get there an hour before the show starts and like I'll take, I'll eat a nice breakfast, I'll eat a nice lunch, I'll go get coffee, like if it's seated, right? Or if I have a seated seat. Um, but either way, that's just how I work, you know? But then once I get to wherever I'm gonna be, right? The concert starts. Um, personally, I have a big issue on phone storage. Every single concert I've been to, my phone has run out of storage and it's embarrassing because I'm literally there during the show, like deleting apps and everything, deleting a lot of stuff. And I'm like, OMG, like this is so embarrassing. Um, but it is what it is. Um, try to clear out your phone storage before. And like, I try to also, but for some reason I still end up with no storage and it's insane and then lastly is recording the concert honestly recording is completely up to you you decide on what um songs you want to record or just like what things you want to record um for me personally since i do vlog a lot of my concerts to post on youtube for you guys what i do is basically if it's like if it's a song that i really really like i'll try to like record only like the chorus so i can enjoy like the, the rest of the song like i'll record like the first chorus and then after that like i'll put my phone away and then like i'll jam out to the rest of the song um if it's a song that's like a little bit more slow paced like a ballad then that one's a little bit easier to record record because it's like you can have your light stick and you're like recording at the same time like you know but it really just depends like what i do is like i'll look at the set list and i'll choose and i'll be like okay i'm gonna record this song and this song and this song and this song and all that stuff and then i just kind of go from there this really really depends but i try to have fun and record at the same time so sometimes my videos like i'll be recording right and i'll be like jamming out so sometimes my videos will be at the floor but you know what it's still a fun time it's a vibe so recording is completely up to you you decide when you're going to record and when you're not going to record um i did record a lot during 80s and 127 only because like i was barricade um so i was really up close to them and honestly i still can't believe that these people are real like they're real people like literally i was like omg like these people can see me like kind of because like you know like the lights but i was like i'm so close to these people like I'm pretty sure I made eye contact with Mingi and I'll put the video somewhere up on the screen but literally I was like OMG like these people are real like this is insane but lastly honestly the last thing is to have fun like literally just have fun like this concert is supposed to be fun like it's supposed to be the time of your life like you bought this ticket because you love this group like literally like just have fun honestly this concert is about you and your experience and you should have the best experience possible i try to have the best time ever um like literally 
I will not let anybody ruin my concert days because it's like I paid to be here and I'm gonna have fun Don't let anybody ruin your day, okay? But yeah, this is basically just how my brain works when I'm planning for a concert and how my steps take place so Obviously, it's like first get the ticket then transportation and hotel and then it's picking out my outfits usually my outfits i'll have like three different outfits that i'm going to choose from and then sometimes i don't end up wearing any of them and i just put all three of them together and hope for the best and then after the outfits is like the accessories and what i need to pack and then lastly it's actually going to the concert and like getting merch and stuff but that's just how my brain works and how I process for it. Honestly, I've been trying to save more money to go to more concerts because I realized last year I was spending a lot of money on concerts and I was just spending money on concerts. So this year I was really, really, really in adamant on saving money, hence why my little jar is right there of saving money for concerts. Um, but yeah that's just basically how i plan for a concert those are like some little tips that i have regarding concerts if you have any more questions please feel free to dm me on instagram or leave comments in the comment section i will try my best to get back to you guys like literally i feel like i'm missing out on so many different like little things but if you have any more questions please feel free to reach out to me i will try my best to answer them um but other than that thank you guys so much for watching i'm so sorry that this is a long video um, but I will see you guys next time. Bye!